What's up guys, Dalmater here, and today we're going to be reacting to a new channel. So this one is Dova Hadi, Dovati, I'm not exactly sure how you pronounce it, I'm sure he'll say it in the video. Uh, and it is called Unbiased History. So apparently this is like a comedy history series that is kind of, you know, supposed to be like full of memes and kind of taking the piss. And it's written almost from, like, the perspective of, like, how a Roman historian would have written, hist written history. Uh, for anyone who's not familiar, Roman historians kind of over-embellished how good Rome was a lot of the time. And were very braggadocious about Rome and looked down on everyone else except, you know, kind of the Greeks a little bit. They kind of viewed them as they're somewhat equal. But, uh, and, yeah, it's it's supposed to be, like, a, a j real history but, like, in a joking way from my understanding of it, from what people have told me. So I'm excited to see this. Apparently there's a ton of internet memes in here, like, you know, reference to internet memes. Uh, so yeah. And anyway, this one is the the first one. So this is Unbiased History, Rome 1, the Roman mythology, in quotation marks. Uh, so already off to a great start, start with just the title. So anyway, link to the original video down below, and let's jump into it. Once was a dream. A dream to purge this rotten world from the barbarians we fest it. <laughs> Cold room. Thousands of years ago, the world lived in a dark age. Europe, like the rest, was a complete shithole, with barbarians on the as far as one can see. <laughs> okay, I gotta look at this map. I, I already like this. I already like how he's just taking the piss, and he's got... Okay, so we got the fucking... We got the boomers, boomer Etruscans, boomer Illyrians, um, the fucking brain dead and boomer, uh, germ uber shithole. Gallic shithole, Iberian shithole, Breton shithole. Okay. Areas of old breeds as far as one could see. Among the here, here we slouch, Baltic fins, and plenty of other shithole dwellers. <laughs> These wild beasts were the Greeks, savage animals who spent their existence killing, raping, and shitting on each other. The gods <laughs> were disgusted by what they saw. Their solution was to start again. A new race was built. They were made to be perfect, resulting in the birth of the Trojans. Let loose in the middle of the Greek chaos, the Trojans set out to bring order to the place, inventing civilization with the founding of Troy. <laughs> <laughs> no, my huts don't count as cities, you barbarian apologists. No matter the mystery. Communism the equals. They were uh, let's see. What does that say? It, it works if we use magic, and it's stores than capitalism. That's great. Uh, funnily enough, like the funny thing is, like the Romans actually, you know, one of the reasons Caesar came to power was a kind of like pseudo communism. He was uh, basically trying to push through that made him really popular. Um, that's it, kind of an oversimplification, uh, but yeah, it, it's there's nothing new under the sun, and there's communism or ideas that are very much like communism dating back to pretty much as far as we know even back to like ancient egypt trojans mastered it they were the pride of the gods attracting the collective envy of the greeks it <laughs> with the kidnapping of the Trojan makes Prince snoo snoo queen, whom lusted after his perfect body <laughs> i love the retconning of the helen of troy she she kidnaps him <laughs> The event, tricking the Greek hordes to destroy who wronged them. Easily fooled, the barbarians encircled Troy, numbering the hundreds of millions. It became known as the Trojan Wars, a series of catastrophic Greek failures. As always, the Greeks turned to divine intervention to achieve their foul goals, taking advantage of Jupiter's fear for Troy's potential. Once in Troy, the Greeks smelled the scent of civilization for the first time. <laughs> Hated it. They did what they did best, killing, raping, and shitting without mercy. The rape of Troy would bring an end to civilization itself, were it not for the unsung hero, Anchises. Anchises never shared his people's kindness towards barbarians. The moment he first saw a Greek, Anchises knew peace would never last. Predicting the worst, Anchises impregnated the goddess of beauty using his Trojan charm. Resulting the birth <laughs> of the man, the myth, the legend himself. Ajax. Charles Maximus. At the day of the sack, Aeneas was from a no. the woman he was sleeping with. I thought, out of his house and savagely slaughtered I thought it was going to be about Ajax, because Ajax is like obviously the like one of the legendary founders of Rome who apparently came from Troy. His way for the Greek horde was nothing but his bare dick, all while carrying his elderly father with one hand and his <laughs> with the other. This heroic act much impressed Jupiter. As an apology, he granted Aeneas the divine destiny to settle in their ancestral Italian lands, where their descendants were prophesied to save the world. And so, the dream of Rome was born. Aeneas braved the seas, easily defeating all gods and monsters that stood in his way, making a plan to stop at Carthage for resupply. In it, Aeneas was faced against the greatest threat of man's life, a fought the fought. <laughs> Dito <laughs> demanded Aeneas to satisfy her in bed every day for a year, which Aeneas honorably agreed for the greater good. The debt paid, Aeneas said to return to his destiny. Dido could
couldn't accept his departure, but Aeneas insisted, knowing better than to fall prey to a fault. In her rage, Dido burned all his leftover belongings, throwing herself into the fire, cursing their descendants to eternal rivalry, dooming millions to die in the wars to come. Historians to debate if her cruelty derived most from being a punic or a woman. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I love this guy. This is so good. Oh my god, I'm surprised this is allowed on YouTube, just because YouTube is so ridiculous sometimes. And he has finally arrived in Italy, becoming the king of Alba Longa. After a quick trip to join the road with his father, killing a barbarian warlord, and banging the local Trojan princess. With her, Aeneas was able to father a pure blooded Trojan family, a chance unfortunately not granted to his man, leading to generations of miscegenation. The years came and went, leaving Numitor, Aeneas' descendant, to suffer from the consequences, being usurped by his bastard half barbarian brother. Once again, <laughs> the he virgin to be destroyed by barbarian scum, this time offput by the birth of the legendary twins, Romulus and Remus. That's the, the chat. daughter and the god Mars. The usurper was too much of a coward to kill them himself, much less in the front of the god of war, giving the twins for a servant to go drown in the Tiber River, having the princess assassinated while Mars wasn't looking. But the servant refused to commit the crime, his Trojan ancestry overpowering the corruption from his barbarian side. Tibetanus, god of the Tiber, took over from there, guiding the young lads to the care of a she-wolf. She raised them loving, <laughs> her wolf-like instincts through the power of her canine titties, all until they were old enough to be adopted by shepherds. As true Trojan descendants, sons of Mars, fed by wolves and raised by stoic shepherds, the twins grew to that be... Feeling and pleb life. The admiration of the man and the love of the woman, the twins were envied by the local barbarian in souls. Incapable of competing in their strength, intellect, or beauty, the barbarians such employed their only field of advantage, evil. One day, as Remus looked at the stars, Remus the orgy house. From yet another orgy, the barbarians ganged up on him, capturing Remus by threatening the girls if he tried to escape, delivering him at the hands of the usurper, whom happily imprisoned him. Learning of the act through his wolf instinct, Remus was outraged. In response, he used his charisma to raise an army with his followers and siege Obalonga. Despite an armed and untrained, Romulus forces shattered through the city's defenses, <laughs> the usurper and freeing the hostages. Claimed as heroes, the twins were taught of their Trojan ancestry by their grandfather, whom named them the rightful kings of the city, an honor they refused. Instead, they set out to build a new city, gathering the last pure-blooded Trojans with them. But no girls allowed. They used their no girls to allowed. Back to their mummy wolf had raised them. Among those seven hills, history was about to be changed forever. But before it could, a rift had developed between the brothers. Romulus sought to follow on Troy's steps, believing that barbarians could be peacefully negotiated with. But Remus, having suffered the most under barbaric crimes, he knew peace was impossible, fearing that if they followed the exact same path as Troy, they would suffer its same fate. It was a source of great debate between the brothers, True. different perspectives generating many disputes. As civilized men, they attempted to solve it with a bird-watching contest, which resulted in a tie, due to the gods enjoying the drama of their conflict. At any rate, the brothers agreed they at least needed a wall, for if there is one thing the local barbarians hated the most was the smell of progress. By Romulus raising <laughs> the walls, we must build the top. As he did so, one of their followers climbed to the top of him, nearing ever closer. Suddenly, he pushed Remus from the wall. Hearing the screams, Romulus was shocked, rushing to his brother's aid, finding him in fatal conditions. In his righteous anger, Romulus demanded an explanation. Okay, so obviously th he's, uh, yeah, this is I, I, <laughs> definitely unbiased. Um, he, he's taking some liberties with uh, how this historically, well, I shouldn't say historically, how the how this myth actually takes place, or the you know, is supposed to have taken place. Uh, you know, in every version I've ever heard, maybe he, maybe this is a different version that's actually told, but I think he's just taking the piss here considering this whole thing's just been a meme. Um, Romulus killed Remus. Uh, you know, they got into a squabble. It's kind of like Cain and Abel type thing, uh, except he gets rewarded instead of, you know, the mark of Cain. Look closely, the explanation became clear. It was no Trojan, but a barbarian. <laughs> the virgin Troy pretending to be a forever. Chad. Remus let him escape, choosing instead to stand by his brother's last dying moment. With his last breath, Remus spoke one last time, naming the city Rome in honor of his brother, whom he named its first king. Drowned in sorrow, Romulus accepted, mercifully ending his brother's suffering. With this harsh lesson, Romulus finally understood Remus. There was no hope for peaceful coexistence. And so, not only had Rome to surpass Troy's greatness, but to spread it to the world, cleansing of the barbarian plague whom seeked it. It was an inevitable war between order and chaos. The barbarians would go on to spread how Romulus murdered his brother for power, a lie most people still believe today. But at least you, my dearest brother... <laughs> a lie which people still believe to this day. <laughs> I love this. This is so good. People told me this was funny, but I, I, I just love the, the unbiased histories. <laughs> The unbiased history. On the next chapter, Romulus founds the Eternal City, with a monarchy to rule it and a senate to guide it. It will eventually be ruined by Greeks, as all good things are, but the Romans <laughs> will keep fighting on, as should you. And remember, plebs, to the subscribers, everything will be given. From the Patreons, everything will be taken. Quite unchristian, but thankfully that's a chapter for another time. Ciao, ciao! Yeah, so I, I, I wonder what he's gonna do. So obviously right now, he's very anti-Greek. Um, which kind of makes sense, right? Because, it, you know, the founding mythology of Rome, there's obviously the, you know, the, uh, 
the belief that they were the descendants of Trojans. I, I'm surprised he didn't talk about Ajax, um, unless the guy he was talking about there was another name for Ajax that I'm not familiar with. Um, but I wonder, you know, once Rome absorbs the Greeks and there's Greek rulers and the capital moves to Greece, which uh, unfortunately eventually becomes Turkey, um, you know, is he still going to be very anti-Greek, or is he going to, you know, change it up? And also, I wonder how he's going to handle the Christian question when that becomes a thing. Um, because, because at, like, at certain points, Rome is very, very anti-Christian, but then obviously, you know, eventually becomes Christian, and that's why you have the Roman Catholic Church, and, you know, they were the the, the largest spreaders of Christianity, them and their subsequent states through, like, Spain and France and all that. Um it's gonna be really. I'm. I'm really interested to see how he takes this. Uh, yeah. Anyway, let me know what you think below. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.